Good day and welcome to the first day of autumn and the first Sunday of autumn as we gather together to share the good news of our faith, the loving God, the caring Christ, and an empowering Holy Spirit. And as we gather together this day for this time of worship, I invite you now to share with me our call to worship. Let us share together. But let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another for every man shall bear his own burden be not deceived god is not marked for whatever man soweth that shall he also reap 
from Paul's letter to the Galatians. And as we prepare to share our time together this autumn day, I extend to you a word of welcome, a word of well-being, a word of peace. It is the word that Jesus spoke at the resurrection when he arose and greeted Mary. The Hebrew word, shalom, welcome. I'm glad you're here with us this day. Well-being, that as we journey forth this day and this week, God's presence is with us. And peace in body, mind, and spirit as we celebrate our faith. So I invite you now to share with me that simple words, shalom, shalom in Christ, shalom. And in that shalom, we light the Christ candle. As Jesus said, I am the light that shines in the darkness. And the darkness can never put it out. That light shines for us. The light of Christ is here this day to shine for us and be with us and to be our guide in our journey forward in this coming week. May that light shine in your life with those you know and care for. God bless you and keep you in Christ's light. Amen. As we have shared the shalom in Christ together, let us share our preparation for this time of worship. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glorify your holy name. We come to you as humble servants. We come to you laying all on the altar. We ask you to cover us with your love, mercy, goodness, and grace. Let your light shine down on us and lead us on the paths of righteousness. Our hearts to love all mankind and help us to be better Christians. Be with us each and every day and guide us as we pray. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Our scripture this day is from the Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter, verses 25 through 29. I'm sure you are familiar with the text. This is Jesus speaking to those gathered to observe the Passover. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send to my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you will rejoice that I am going to the Father because a father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. May God add blessings to the reading of this word this day, and bring blessings to those who hear the written and spoken word, and transform it into the living word in their body, mind, and spirit. Jesus is gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem with apostles, disciples, I believe family and friends. And he's been talking about what's coming forward in the journey, in the mission and ministry. Much of John's gospel centers upon the coming of the resurrection from the very beginning to its very end. It's about Jesus' sacrifice, so to speak. But in this passage here, I said these things, he said, while I'm still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, there are other definitions in the Greek about that word advocate. It could also be comforter, counselor, <clears throat> when I go on to conclude my mission, there is someone there to be with each of you. Through all times and all situations, the Holy Spirit, the breath of God's creation, the breath of our lives, that Holy Spirit will be sent to you in my name to be there. Do not be afraid. We're living in a time of uncertainty, socially, politically, many places economically. But Jesus says, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but as I give to you. Often we see peace as being, if I made more money, I would be happy in that peace. If I had a good job or a good relationship in life, I'd be at peace. Unfortunately, many people find peace in an addiction to comfort them, which will ultimately destroy them and hurt them. Peace I leave to you, not as the world gives, but as I give to you. That peace is faith. Faith in a loving God, not a punishing God. Faith in a God who knows us and whose image each of us is created. Faith that Christ came as an act of God to be God's presence with us in our humanity. To have God's understanding of us through Christ. To be like us through Christ. peace I give to you. Faith. Trust. Trust is an act of faith. To know that you're not alone. There's someone there, someone here, beside all of us now, who can put an arm around us and give us comfort in a moment of crisis, uncertainty, 
pain or loss. We all go through those things in our life's journey. But my peace is that I am with you, whatever may happen. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. I have been afraid at times in my own journey, uncertain, doubtful. But the good news is, we have them, and it's all right to have them. But then to know that the trust we have is expressed in God's love for each of us. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. God did not send the Son of the world to condemn them, to condemn us, but that we might have liberation and freedom and life, and in that peace of body, mind, and spirit. Jesus said, I'm going away. This is part of his task, his witness, his ministry. That the atonement, the atonement with God, was not his death for our sins, but his expression of journeying through the times of our lives' journey. That God understands our own passing. And at times our own uncertainties and fears. But that, the good news, I do not believe God, Christ died for the sins of all man. He resurrected for the salvation of all of us. That's the good news. That's the peace of our faith. If you love me, you will rejoice in what I'm doing. This is part of Christ's experience. Even the crucifixion, in a sense, is not a time of sorrow, but a time of expectation, a time of reflection and meditation, we look at our own lives and our journeys, but also a time saying, looking forward. And now I have told you this before it occurs. So when it does occur, you believe, not in that moment, but what shall come out of that moment, what shall be the ultimate moment of our salvation, our safety, our security, our well-being, our true peace, that we are God's children in God's image, no matter who we are or where we are, and that God in Christ comes to us in the resurrection to say to each of us, Shalom, peace. To say to us, I am your God, I am your Savior, and to give us the breath that the Holy Spirit is empowered within us as a people of good news, of hope, trust, love. And may you have that peace in body, mind, and spirit this day and this coming week. May you have that peace as you lift up prayers for those you know who need a word of prayer. That as Christ is the example of caring for us, that our prayers and our actions are acts of God's will for us, God's love for us and care for us, that we have peace being with others, and being for others. God bless you this Sunday. God guide you this autumn. And let Christ welcome you each and every day. And each and every day may the Spirit, the Advocate, the Counselor, the Comforter, be with you and within you to guide your journey. In Christ's name, this day, amen. As we gather for prayer this day, the pastoral prayer and your prayers, I would ask that we lift up prayers about concern in our nation, economically, socially, politically, 
that all are treated equally with respect and dignity, to remember those in Springfield, Ohio, who've been attacked because of their ethnicity as immigrants, legal immigrants, and now being terrorized by words of politicians, political commentators, to increase the flames of prejudice, hatred towards those who are new to this nation. If I may, there's, new, there's concerns about immigration. And in this nation, there has always been concerns about immigration. And most of the people who immigrated to this nation were once upon, once upon a time illegals also, wherever they came from, particularly, in this case, Europe. To pray that this kind of thing is reconciled, that people can have hope and dignity and faith and trust, and again have peace, the peace that Christ gives us in body, mind, and spirit. And to pray for those we know who need a word of peace. Let us pray. Our God, our Creator, O Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, O Holy Spirit, the breath of our empowerment. We lift up our voices, not as one, but as all this day to you, asking that you, our God, whose breath brought creation into being, breathe on us that spirit that can enter us and give us guidance, courage, strength to be there to help other people, to guide other people, to strengthen other people, to help those in Springfield, Ohio, who have gone through hatred, violence, and prejudice for political reasons. That brings in dignity to their humanity. Gracious God, lift them up in their humanity, those who are recent immigrants, those who are there to find a life of promise in the promised land this country is often called. Be with them, be with that city and town, and be with this nation that we recognize and lift up. Each of us is in your image. Each of us have been created by you and each of us as Christ, as a guide to walk with us and to talk with us and call us his own, your own. A Holy Spirit that comes at the resurrection of the restoration of, peace, of life to bring peace to body, mind, and spirit. We pray for peace in our bodies this day that where there's illness, health may be restored. I pray for peace of mind, that where there is fear and uncertainty, prejudice or violence, we may find reconciliation. We pray that the Holy Spirit be the breath that gives us the strength to proclaim your peace, your well-being. Be with our friends and neighbors and strangers, ones we know and don't know. That your presence be there to be a living source of hope and help and healing. We pray this day again that in our needs you are there for us to guide us, help us, heal us, strengthen us, and empower us to be your chosen ones to share the good news. God bless each of us. Christ walk with each of us, and the Holy Spirit empower each of us this day in the coming days. In Christ's name, Amen.
invite you now to share with me our Lord's Prayer, saying these words together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being with me this day. God bless, keep, God bless you and keep each and, one, each and every one of you until we meet again. And I invite you now to share with me our benediction for this first Sunday in autumn. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus in sincerity. Go in peace. Amen.